Hi there, Ms. Lambs here. In this video, we are going to talk about the set, uh, part two session, the evaluation under the evaluation criteria. So let's get started. So what we're looking for in the evaluation, first of all, we're looking for the strength and weaknesses, okay? Um, a lot of students overlap the strength part, okay? So we will elaborate, elaborate a little bit more what we mean by the strength part. Weaknesses, most students can mention it, but uh, it's very superficial. So we will look into how we can make it better. So such as you should mention about the uh, error bar, as the error bar, uh, on two aspects. One is the length of the error bar. Another one is whether between the increments, okay, whether there is uh, any overlap of error bar. We'll show you a few examples later on. Next one, uh, as previous conclusion part, previous video conclusion has mentioned, that uh, you need to state whether there's any anomalous data and suggest what caused it, and do you do anything about it, and suggest method for improvement, okay? So that is under the, uh, perhaps the weakness part. And then any technical problem that you face and how do you solve it, okay? The impact of that in that experiment. So that's how you can enrich, enrich your um, strength and weaknesses. Okay. So mentioning the strength and weaknesses is actually not difficult. But how can you enrich it? Okay. The how what 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 is the problem? How does it impact on your experiment? What do you do about it? So these are the things that you can help to enrich the strength and the weaknesses part. And the next part is uh, further study suggested. Okay. So. Next one is, uh, okay, so this is extracted from the examiner report. So what are the examiner looking for? So discussion, okay, so this is very important. Uh, this, so there's, as you can see, there are three band levels, okay, score band level in this criteria. So what's the big difference between them is that one of them is very superficial. You just state it, okay, outline it. And the next level is you describe it, okay? And the next level is you discuss about it, you elaborate about it, okay? Including the general specific part. You talk about the reliability, we just mentioned about the SD error bar and identify a witness in terms of method and materials. Now, the material part is uh, another thing that a lot of students overlook, okay? Uh, for example, let's say if you have your experiment involved, are uh, you measuring the mass of the gelatin, uh, the change of mass of gelatin? And because gelatin is so small, then the change of mass is very small, okay? And if you think about it, the equipment that you use, if your electron balance can only read up to one decimal place and comparing with another electronic balance that can read up to three decimal place, which one is better? Okay, so you need to talk about the choice of equipment, okay? I talk about the accuracy precisions of your um, uh, equipment, okay? Apparatus. So uh, next one is um, evaluate the relative impact of the winners. As, as we mentioned in the previous example, if your change of mass is so small, that means the ability to read the precision, to read the mass is very important, okay? That will be a big impact. If you if the mass is so small, mass change is so small, and you can only read up to one decimal place, then your uncertainty will be wider, okay? So it really affects your result. So you need to evaluate those. And the next one is um, suggest for improvement and extensions, okay? Uh, the key things for, <clears throat> sorry, the key things for this part is that um, it must be relevant, okay? It must be relevant, relevant and feasible. Okay, so um, there you go, relevant and feasible. And should be re uh, also could be related to the methodology that they use. So this is actually extracted from the IB syllabus uh, regarding to the uh, what they're looking for. As you can see in all the band, uh, score band, they have mentioned about strength and weakness, strength and weakness, strength and weakness here. And also suggest for improvement, okay? Um, here you can see that this is very superficial, very limited. You just state, you outline it, you state it only for score one and two. For score three and four, okay, you have described it, okay, and how it impacts your um, methods, okay, and uh, the conclusion as well. But here, not only you have described it, you have also discussed how it affects your method, okay, and how it impacts on your conclusion. So uh, you can see that it's actually a gradual growth, okay, um, as to the quality of your work as along the way. So what makes a good uh, strength and weaknesses? Okay, so uh, for example, in the case of weaknesses, you need to mention three things. One is what is, and second one is how does it affect your experiment, and third one is how you overcome it. So um, we will recommend students to use a table. It's much easier and so, so that you won't miss out any points, okay? But sometimes students, they run out of space because you only have about 12 page limit, then they will prefer to use paragraph. 
and if you use paragraph make sure you place your item okay with your impact and with your solution together okay make sure you do it together so uh, this is one of the examples so uh, now uh, one just one thing i want to mention that not enough time is not credit okay so here if they mentioned that they can only do three repeats and it's not very clear as to what is the problem three repeats that means that there's not enough data okay not enough repeats okay so actually uh, in order to improve this statement even better it should mention that there's not enough repeats okay and then the impact is that it affects the reliability okay so how you overcome it by doing more repeats okay so be a bit more straightforward be a bit more direct now the, why this one is not very good so for example they would collectively mention about the problems okay so oh don't have enough repeat the mix up the plant position when you measure the height so don't make it a list okay so make sure you write down each other elaborate first before you move on to the next item okay so that's the suggestions i will give when you write a good uh, strength and weaknesses part okay moving on all right so how do we interpret the error bar um, there's two parts that you need to mention one is the length of the error bar so let's look at this one so for example the bar chart here okay uh, if you look at the length of the error bar, you'll notice that honey has the longest error bar. So in terms of reliability, honey may not be very reliable as between the repeats, the data are very different between the repeats, okay? And meanwhile, ginger, the length of the error bar is very short. So that means that the reliability of the ginger data is quite reliable. This means that between the repeats, okay, uh, the data is very similar, okay? So that's what we mentioned about the reliability here, okay? And then um, what about the second part, which is whether the error bars overlap? So what, what, what do we mean by that? So let's look at the bottom graph here, okay? So although it's not very clear as to what is it, it's not a very good example, but you can see between the increments, there's a lot of overlapping. Okay, so if you make a dotted line on the number four here, you'll notice that four and five has at least half of the error bar has overlapped. So what does that mean? This means that the, there's shared data between the increments, okay? So what, uh, that will also indicate uh, whether your rela the experimental design, the increments interval is too narrow. So here you can see that uh, actually the increment is every one. So one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so if there's a lot of overlapping, perhaps you should try some wider interval, such as uh, for example saying that uh, two, four, six, eight, or maybe five, 10, 15, uh, 20, and so on. Okay, so, uh, but here we can, all we can say is that there's a lot of overlap between the interval. So that means that there's a lot of shared data between the interval, okay? So that's the idea right and then also uh first thing okay not too related to the error bar okay is that um how do we use the uh, trend line so for some experiment they can use the trend line to extrapolate the um result so for example let's say if we want to see in this case we want to see uh, what is the uh concentration that can ensure the uh enzymes is the nature put it this way okay so you can see that actually this is a curve okay um, with previously when we talk about the graph we already mentioned that uh, in theory the graph should be a curve uh, the, the trend line equation should use a curve equations okay so assuming that the student did change that into a curve equations then through using this equation you can estimate what is the concentration that is needed to fully denature the enzymes okay so that's another way you can use for the um, trend line from the trend line to extrapolate data to make possible uh, estimation of what you're looking for okay so next one uh so just a very quick checklist okay so um talk about the error bar we've talked about the error bars okay and what do they mean okay so that is the second level already okay so referring to the sufficient of data so whether you have enough repeats okay uh, and also, for example, the range of your interval. Is it wide enough to establish a trend? Okay. Uh, strength and weakness, we just mentioned already, and uh, suggest relevant suggestions for the further work. Okay. So this is actually from the uh, IA booklet. You can see that this one is um, the evaluation part is mentioned in this video video but i just want to highlight a few things one is that time management doesn't count as a technical um, 
technical error. So okay, so you need to man um you can mention it, okay, but don't ex don't count on this, okay. And then we also mention about the error bars, two things about error bar, the length and whether they overlap. Uh, the range, okay, if there's a lot of overlap, then you should reconsider the range of your independent variable uh, variables, okay. And then um, regarding to the uh, improvement, okay, so after you, you should, we will recommend you to use table. And if you use table, you need to explain how your improvement helps the experiment, okay? So that's about it. I hope this video can guide you through uh, when you were writing your evaluation part. So thank you and bye for now.